hi and welcome to another great webinar about you by movie as always we love to bring you these uh, talks to discuss some of the trending topics from the world of streaming uh, my name is aditya and i'm the corporate communication manager at movie and i'll be your host today now before we start i would request the audience to keep posting your questions in the q and a chat only and we'll address them at the end of the session with this i would like to take the opportunity to have a quick vo- overview about movie The founded in 2011, Movi is headquartered in New York and is founded with a vision to disrupt the global audio and video streaming market. Today, we stand as one of the leading players in the uh, streaming platform service space. So much so that we were recently awarded the badge for the highest rated platform by G2.com, a world-leading software review website. Movi CSR wing, Movi Foundation, was also recently awarded the Tech Care Awards by Trust Radius for its various campaigns implemented over the years. It also gives us immense pleasure to share that Movie Live, a live streaming platform, and Movie Mini, a short video creation platform, uh, sorry, for a short video creation app, has been nominated for the upcoming Streaming Media Leaders Choice Awards. Now, over the years, the team has developed some of world-class products with several more in the pipeline. Our key product, Movie One, offers an end-to-end solution to launch your own account, a customizable, agile, and scalable OTT streaming and live platforms with zero coding. Now, having spoken about our domain expertise, let's get on with today's webinar. So, the media consumption has taken a dramatic evolution over the last decade. Now, currently, the OTT streaming solution seems to be at the forefront of media innovations, and it is one of the most significant global media opportunities for delivering the power of TV, par- paired with the scalability and agility of the mighty internet. At its core. The OTT or over-the-top services enable users to stream video content through internet without satellite and cable subscription. Now, content creators and media brands can expand existing content to new audiences and heighten their audience engagement through these innovative video experiences. Today, OTT platforms like Hulu, Amazon Prime, and Netflix are taking the frontiers. But the power of OTT depends on seamless possibilities, accessibility, affordability, and convenience that it offers to users. The rise of supporting technologies like CDN, mobile capabilities, and 5G, alongside the evolution of content genres, is further increasing the use of OTT platforms. However, the success of any OTT business relies on several factors, including the kind of content it uploads, the revenue model it follows, and the marketing or the promotion strategy it implements. Now, while the OTT market keeps getting increasingly complex, where keeping ahead of the competition and maintaining market share becomes crucial. There are several multitude of on-demand and streaming services available for viewers. But having a slick and streamlined OTT experience is crucial for all content owners and operators to stay in the game. While the content library and on-demand offerings may be an ultimate decider for most viewers on nowadays, having a versatile OTT strategy for different set of targeted customers is always the plus point. Now, joining us today is Mr. Rohan Goel, Global Vice President of Business Development Movie, to guide us more on this topic as well as share deep insights from our customers from the globe to help us distribute our content better, faster, and uh, offer a better experience to our customers. Now, before we jump in, let me share a quick brief about Rohan. Having just done his MBA in marketing after his bachelor's in engineering, Rohan comes with over 15 years of experience in business development and uh, leadership experience. Sharing an aura of versatility in building and managing new revenue lines for various SaaS organizations over the last eight years, Rohan speaks of himself as a lifelong learner who believes in upgrading his skill sets with the latest technologies and trends. On a personal note, Rohan loves to paint landscapes and is an avid reader with a personal library of over 500 books. So, without further ado, it gives me immense pleasure to welcome Rohan and thank him for taking out time to conduct this webinar. Thank you so much, Rohan, and welcome to the session. Uh, thanks, Aditya, and uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Uh, thanks for uh, taking the time to uh, join us, and we will be very happy to share all the insights that we've gleaned from uh, a lot of our customers. We have thousands of customers across the globe, and uh, while we can't share any specifics uh, due to confidentiality agreements, we've aggregated the insights for you. So you can learn uh, as a group as to how our customers are monetizing their content uh, faster, uh, better and cheaper. We've also tried to uh, also uh, aggregate a little bit of publicly available information so that you know you can make the best out of this half an hour or so of session that we are 
planned for you uh, to uh, give the most value for your time uh, we are going to go very quickly uh, through the slides uh, should take me about 20 25 minutes and then post which uh, happy to take any questions uh, that you have so uh, what's the story so far the story so far um, covid uh, two years of people staying at homes uh, the behavior was we need more content uh, and uh, all of us we in a rush to provide more content we believe that if there is more content on the uh, website or the app customers will continue to stay with us they will continue to con consume content continue to pay us uh, through the subscription mode and start also demanding more quality content so uh, we started looking at a lot of analytics we started looking at a lot of user experience uh, in terms of how we can either create something of our own or at uh, at best you know look at the industry captains and what kind of experience they are offering and maybe try to uh, give our customers the same experience because essentially they're getting trained on how to consume content from the industry captains which is typically uh, happens across industries but actually now the things have changed it's changed post covid uh, consumer confusion in terms of so many uh, content marketplaces so many apps uh, so much content so it's it's actually from confusion we feel that it's gone to frustration the customer is really frustrated and hence the vod consumption or subscription is now decreasing um, i'm sure you all know that netflix is also struggling to retain consumers um, and they are trying to shift models to become more profitable uh, uh, from s what to a what that is been uh, also across all our customers as well where they've seen that uh, the projections that they had in terms of revenue growth which were essentially uh, built in the covid or just uh, just after the covid era now those projections are not being met the growth is slower and uh, then what should we do in terms of uh, to get our content how do we monetize faster and how do we again go back to the uh, the revenue growth projections that we gave to our management and to ourselves so uh, we we just got five insights uh, which we uh, will quickly very quickly present to you um faster better cheaper i think those are the buzzwords uh, and we're going to try and maybe add a lot more value in terms of what we think will work for you uh, but before that i think uh, i'll spend a couple of minutes on this holy grail of expectations uh which is faster better cheaper um i call it the holy grail uh, because uh in my experience uh i have never been able to deliver or able to get all three right so it's either two of them that you have to settle for so as your strategy uh i'm uh, you have to think about uh do i need faster and better so if you if you need faster and better it will not be cheap uh if you if you want faster and cheaper then chances are it is not going to be as as best or as good quality that you would want or if you say i want cheaper and better then chances are it will not be as fast as you would want so uh this is this is what i believe you have to kind of think about pick any two and that will be your overall uh, thought process in terms of how do you want to manage your content so let's quickly move into the insights with that as a background so the first insight that we see is that you need to expand your distribution so if you are only on a website you need to move to apps if you are on website and apps you need to move to smart TVs and fire sticks so uh, why uh, the the global trend obviously is that 5G is getting launched in a lot more countries it's already launched and it gives you amazing speeds right and hence people want to consume high quality content or bigger de bigger devices and bigger screens because the data is becoming cheaper so people are buying smart TVs uh, people are buying uh, smart sticks and they are consuming a lot of content on larger screens uh, i'll share some st stats in the succeeding slides but that's the trend and hence you have to think about 
uh, going where your consumers are. If your consumers today are moving from websites and apps to larger screens, you also have to be present on larger screens. Um, but consumers also want cross device capabilities. So if they've started watching some content on mobile phone while driving or while uh, traveling and they reach home, uh, they switch on their TV and they want to continue from where they left off. So that experience has to be seamless. That's what the consumers today are asking for. So some stats and some research for you. For the smart TV market, it is projected that it will grow at a, a CAGR or compounded annual growth rate of 21% from this year over the next seven years. So that's an immense amount of growth in terms of people buying smart TVs. So when they buy smart TVs, obviously they would look at consuming content on smart TVs, which is mostly streaming content. Uh, and that's where you have to be because that's where they're going to spend most of the time. This is some other stats that we uh, pulled from publicly available information. Smart TV sticks, the Fire Sticks and the Google Chromecasts and the Roku uh, of the world, they are also projected to grow at about 8% from, from in, the, in the next four to five years. So these obviously are also connected to uh, the dumb TVs or the, as you call the, the older versions of the televisions to make them smart. So again, they are looking to consume content on larger screens um, and hence uh, you have to be present where they want to consume the content and also they want continuity. So you have to be present on uh, apps, website as well as on uh, the TV, TV apps. So there are various platforms that uh, we've built for uh, as per our customer demand. So all these platforms that you see on your screen uh, are all available with movie. Uh, not all of them are used by everyone. It depends on your target audience, depends on where your audience is. And depending on that, you should think about uh, having those uh, platforms also available along with the website and the apps that I'm sure you already have. So uh, some of our customers have gone uh, for gaming consoles where they their audiences uh, the audience which uh, kind of uh, are very young and are into gaming. So they want to be present where they spend most of the time on, which is on the gaming console. Uh, some of our other uh, audiences, depending on their customer preferences, have chosen to uh, be on Roku and Apple TV and so on and so forth. So all of these platforms, uh, we, should, we should actually analyze yourself, what kind of consumers you have, where are they most likely to uh, be in terms of uh, apart from the platform that you already are and you should think about expanding your distribution. So yeah, so that was the first insight. The second insight very quickly is uh, start, uh, we, what we always recommend is learn from uh, what your industry captains are doing. So um, if you see all of them are going towards a recurring revenue bundle. All of them are bundling their services. Uh, we call that rundles, that is a recurring revenue bundle. Uh, so Amazon Prime, for example, is bundling audio, video, shopping, and Kindle. Uh, Apple obviously is hardware plus Apple TV plus games. Uh, Walmart, I'm sure you know the recent announcement, uh, ship, free shipping plus Paramount along with their shopping. So that's, that's a rundle that they've created. Uh, Disney, it's rumored that they're going to bundle Disney Plus with Disney theme park. So this is one insight that we feel <clears throat> you should apply to your own uh, country, to your uh, own uh, customer segments and see where you can create these uh, these bundles, where you can acquire customers and keep them more importantly because uh, they are going to use these various services and then there's a sticky factor for them to continue uh, investing on all of them. So um, there are different categories of rundles. Uh, we've tried to list some of them. Uh, app bundling, uh, service bundling, uh, retailers, uh, telecommunications, and some non-competitive businesses. So we'll try to attempt to uh, show you what we try to mean in terms of some examples uh, in the subsequent slides. 
तो एप बंडल आई एम श्योर यू ऑल हैव सीन एमेजॉन प्राइम दे ट्राइंग टू बंडल डिफरेंट कॉन्टेंट एप्स एंड प्रेजेंट एज एन एग्रीगेटर प्लेटफॉर्म सो आई हैव एन एग्जाम्पल आई शो यू स्क्रीन शॉट इन द सब स्क्रीन स्लाइड बट इन इंडिया दे आर ऑफरिंग फोर्टीन डिफरेंट ओ टी टी एप्स ऑन अ सिंगल एमेजॉन प्राइम सब्सक्रिप्शन सो यू कैन टेक एड ऑन सब्सक्रिप्शन अलॉन्ग विद एमेजॉन प्राइम एंड यू कैन वॉच ऑल दिस कॉन्टेंट ऑन एमेजॉन प्राइम सो फॉर कॉन्टेंट ओनर्स लाइक लाइन्स गेट और फॉर डिस्कवरी प्लस और फ्रॉम लोकल कॉन्टेंट ओनर्स लाइक इरास नाउ this becomes a fantastic new way to acquire new customers uh, from an industry captain with at a subsidized cost so uh, so this is a great customer acquisition strategy for customers it becomes very convenient because it's a single sign on they don't have to remember different passwords for different apps and they don't have to uh, continue to pay uh, at different uh, different means it's a single sign on becomes very convenient to the customer also if you want new customers to discover your content uh, you know you can actually also use this as a content sapping technique where you can uh, some of your content which they may be like and they get exposed to on the amazon prime platform they may come and they may uh, sample your content if they like they can continue to pay you so uh, that's one way to kind of uh, get more customers uh, this is one uh, screenshot that we took from the amazon prime very recent i think two days back where you can see <coughs> that you know lions gate play and discovery are already there on very much visible on their main screen so the uh, prime video has uh, if you see here a category called channels and this is one of their strategies to kind of prime video themselves to expand the category of channels that they offer the expand the category of content that they offer which is essentially may not be extremely uh, um cannibalistic but more value additive for them as well this is an exa- another example here it's a little different so canal plus offers these different packages where if you see the first package it's it's more about canal plus and their content but if you see here now they're also offering netflix and disney and ocs etc along with their content so you see the price difference and uh, this is uh, this is something that they are offering to their cons- consumers now here is another example of non competitive businesses where this is sporting business so if you see they they added canal plus sport so here you see a lot of sport uh, sport content which is added uh, to canal plus so this is another example of you uh, adding different kinds of content for customers who would want to watch both so uh, retailers as i said uh, walmart is a prime example where they are trying to also look for value added services for their customers uh, because uh, as we all know retailing is also a very competitive game and they are trying to add as much value as possible so that the customer keeps coming back to them so it's like a symbiotic relationship you also want your customers you want customers to continue to pay you and retailers also want customers to keep coming back and uh, shopping with them so i think it's a win win for both and uh, uh, and they know that you know this trend of customers consuming content on ott is going to rise and it's going to further rise because customers today want on demand customers today want content where they want and when they want so it's no longer the old linear streaming linear tv streaming era uh, which is uh, there and hence retailers also see a lot of value this is one example of walmart as i shared earlier where they tied up with paramount um and this is something that you can also explore in your country uh, with with the retailers where they would be willing to uh, also do a partnership where it's a win win for both Uh, we have seen some of these also happening in india uh, i i couldn't find a brochure but uh, india also is uh, there are the log the top retailers in india are also trying to do that and uh, now with the festive seasons coming um, uh, it's my guarantee that we'll see a lot of these bundling happening over the next 2 3 months uh, this is the third type of bundling that we believe uh, has a lot of potential for uh, for content owners and for ott platforms 
and this obviously i i'm sure all of you know uh, where you can work with a with a telecommunications company where as as i said they are also trying to add a lot of value uh, to their customer base they're trying to retain their customers and here the advantages of which i see which is the biggest advantage for a content owner or a notary platform is career billing so we have a lot of uh, customers who request career billing um that we have a lot, we have some telecom companies also who are our customers the key insight that we gathered here is it's like you know telecom or a mobile business is utility bill you get used to paying a utility bill you don't even um uh, uh think about while paying that and if your ott subscription becomes part of that bill then it it actually it has so sticky that you don't even think about paying that additional 5 10 20 dollars right so i think uh, that's that's something that we've seen when we analyze the billing data is there's a lot of stickiness uh, to career billing there's a lot of stickiness of customers uh, when they adopt for career billing while paying for your services so i think it can be both either you can adopt career billing uh, where you don't really need to uh, integrate with the telecom player or you can kind of go and talk to a telecom player and see if he, he can uh, you know uh, offer your content as an aggregated bundle to his customers at a subsidized cost so it can work both ways in in any case we've seen through our customers and our data that the customer retention is much higher these are some uh, other non competitive businesses that you can uh, partner with uh, as as you you see partnerships are win the game in any business in even in politics today uh, you can't really survive without partnerships so uh, partnerships are the game and you should look at non competitive businesses which are similar taste so your customers have similar taste with, uh, with their customers that they target i think it's a bang on partnership where you can kind of ride on each other's brand equity ride on each other's customer bases and provide value to your customer as a bundle so it's a win win for all three um audio platforms gaming industry um live streaming like sports live streaming or you know very niche uh live streaming that we see uh, we have a lot of customers who are, have uh, a very loyal customer base or tribes as they call it we were very specific sports uh, very specific interests um uh, in religion very specific religious uh, following they they see a lot of value in kind of uh, looking at non competitive businesses and adding value to their customers so uh, one example that you see on your screen is how spotify uh, is also combined with hulu and showtime so a lot of these examples uh, i'm sure there are examples in your country as well uh, but this is just an example of what this can potentially uh, raise your uh, customer acquisition customer retention uh and obviously help you monetize your content uh, uh at a much larger scale than maybe you're currently doing this is an example of hulu and disney plus and espn so you have uh sports as well as uh, entertainment content yeah so we are now moving into insight number 3 very uh, very quickly um so this is obviously the talking point for the last 2 uh, 3 months ever since netflix has announced that they are moving to move into a hybrid s word or a e word model uh, uh, there are various reports of how they going to do this but uh, this is something that we should be have some insights on in terms of what are the different other different kinds of monetization models that you should also think about uh award obviously is the low hanging fruit everybody's talking about award a uh, lot of our customers today who were on s award but now also are looking to uh, move uh, to award and how are the different ways in which you can do that um we believe hybrid uh, award and s award is the future so you need to have uh, uh, both offerings for for your uh, more uh, niche consumers who don't mind paying s word but they don't want ads there will be a section of your consumers who would are ready to pay i think you should have s word which you currently have you should continue to do that uh, maybe an hybrid s word uh, or e word or uh, hybrid uh, s word is something that 
will work for most of the consumers where they're looking to not pay as much but are willing to see some ads but what we are uh, seeing and a lot of our customers and in fact the micro OTTs that work with us who have very specific audiences and very specific uh, uh, type of content they're using the old school marketing techniques of coupons and discounts etc to uh, to get new customers and to retain them so i think these are some things that uh, you should also think about uh, if we can learn from the oldest marketing strategies on how to use coupons how to use discounts and uh, keep your customers get new customers i think we don't see a lot of that in the ott space uh, but we, we i think this is something that you should definitely look at Uh, this is some policy engines that are available within movie that can help you. Obviously, this is something that Netflix does in terms of uh, depending on the resolution of content. You know, you pay a little more for uh, 4K or or ultra high definition content. Uh, you can also explore that. Uh, what we see working for, especially for uh, price sensitive countries, is that if you have a lower tier plans for only mobile to work only on mobile uh, phones. Then that typically gets a lot more uh, purchase, uh, specifically in price sensitive countries. So those are some of the strategies that you can look at in terms of how do you kind of uh, expand your custom base to reach uh, various set of audiences with various buying capacities. So quickly moving into Insight Four. Now this is a very interesting stat uh, that seventy percent of all videos that are watched on YouTube are through recommendations. Now that's a huge amount of videos being consumed on YouTube and these are all through recommendations. So our, our, uh, our, our uh, advice here to all our participants would be please invest on a recommendation engine. If, uh, if, you, have, if you don't have one, uh, please either look at binding one or you could also look at uh, a, a recommendation engine that can be uh, provided with any of these SaaS platforms. You also have a recommendation engine called Ali, which helps you to recommend more content to your customer, to engage him more, to personalize his page uh, so that you know he sees content which is more to his tastes. But most importantly, where I've seen uh, this really helping you is that it aids discovery of your long tail. It is discovery of your content, which typically does not come on the first search or typically people don't search for it, but it's really good content, right? And content, you know, essentially it's good content and there is popular content and there is good popular content, right? So uh, you have good content, but if it's not searchable, if people don't search for it, then people will not discover it. And if people don't discover it, they don't consume it. So I think a recommendation engine there really works in terms of uh, people discovering your long tail and once they discover your long tail of content they are uh, more likely to stick with you because they start developing a taste for the kind of content that you have so uh, that's where we believe a recommendation engine would be a very valuable uh, to your strategy of uh, how do we keep customers how do you acquire uh, so this is more in terms of how do you keep customers but essentially we think it's it's very powerful so uh, some other customer engagement uh, insights that we've seen, uh, Avatar works. In fact, uh, I was uh, surprised when we got this insight that, you know, Avatars really work. People want to see an Avatar. So uh, possibly that is something that you can explore. Uh, parental controls, I think these are important uh, for a certain section of uh, customers who have kids at home. So parental con uh, controls are important for them. Um, social sharing is important for the younger generation. Uh, younger generation would like to uh, share content which they like with their friends, etc. So that is a, a, a feature that you should think about. Uh, watch parties, etc. have been uh, uh, started by Hulu's and the primes of the world. Uh, we've not seen any stats in terms of how it's really kind of uh, keeping people engaged. So the jury is out there, uh, but it's, it's something that our customers are asking for. Uh, live chats obviously is another two-way interaction where you have live chat when you're consuming content. I think this is something that you see a lot on Facebook, on uh, YouTube. 
and this is something that you should definitely look at because people love people will love to interact you will love to talk to people who are like minded looking at like minded content uh watch list i think watch list is a no brainer i think a lot of us use lot watch list uh, some of us don't even go beyond watch list right so we would first want to finish our watch list and then consume other content or discover other content but at least for me my watch list is so way too long i never finish my watch list so i don't know about you guys but uh, this watch list is a must have uh, in terms of engaging your consumer and uh, continue watching feature i think that's something that uh, is is a low hanging fruit for all of us yeah moving into uh, insight pie just keeping a track of time uh, so uh, this is one big trend that we see so uh, people are now open to consume foreign language content people are open to consume content from different countries so essentially all your content should be content without borders while uh, we've seen a lot of our uh, customers who come to us saying that you know i am targeting only this diaspora you know this is these are my people and i want to produce content and market this to my people across the world but they are also surprised today by saying that your people actually recommend your content to their friends and to their extended family and everybody is logging in and everybody is paying and watching that content so i think uh, this is a very a sea change in the last two years uh, uh, during covid people have discovered uh, foreign uh, foreign language content they've liked it Uh, they go on recommendations, and people are uh, willing to consume it, provided you have subtitling and dubbing. So I think subtitling and dubbing is important uh, uh, in terms of getting your content ready to be consumed by a wider section of audience. Um, Sternly localization is what we call. So this is something that we believe we should add to your content if if your content needs to reach a wider audience. So there are two ways in which you can do it. uh one is you know your content to the world as i said uh but you could also look at world cinema and you can look at content partnerships uh while you're bringing world cinema to your platform right so i'm sure if your consumers uh, would also want to experiment with different kinds of cinema uh, and different kinds of content and you can essentially do that as well so we can do a cross exchange uh that is also possible but essentially you are offering customers a lot more which is non competitive in that way because it's not really of a foreign language but they see a lot of value in terms of you adding um a different definition or a different uh, what can i say a uh, different flavor to their and you are actually developing their uh, preferences and their tastes and consumers love that so i think that's something that we should all look at so i'm done with my five insights uh, and while we were pre- preparing this presentation we came across a few more so i'll just take maybe an one minute uh, an additional adit if that's okay absolutely good yeah so uh how do you optimize your otp platform so i think one big thing that we are seeing now with this is connected to the first insight where you need to go on and you need to have your apps on tv platforms universal search universal search is now being provided by most operating systems of TVs and your content can now be searched up outside your app so if you want to search for some content it can be searched outside your app and your content makes your app discoverable so if somebody is uh, searching for a piece of content it is possible uh, that he can discover your app on that ecosystem of TV through universal search so i think that is something which is happening more and more people are searching on universal search for content rather than actually logging into your app and searching for content um so this is some uh, a big trend which has started now with people more and more searching on tv so i think that also helps you acquire more customers because uh, if your content is something that they search they will land on your platform they would want to pay if they want to watch the content uh second is qr code i think i hate typing on the on tv I hate typing passwords on TV. So uh, QR code logins are now becoming very popular, where you just scan the QR code and you get you are able to log in. I think that's what people are finding it really, really comfortable. Because I don't know about you, but I don't like typing long passwords on on television. Um, the third important thing that you've seen is, uh, in spite of building all partnerships, 
uh, people are not concentrating on partnerships they are not marketing to your content to your partner so you know your content the best and the best person to talk about your content with your partner is you uh, but unfortunately that kind of gets uh, not as much as attention as it should because it's good to have content but you should also talk about how good your content is i think that is uh, if you can do that then i guess uh, you get a lot more mind share with your partner you get a lot more visibility on the front page of the partner and hence uh, you get a lot more customer acquisition so yeah so um that's it thank you guys i think i just overshot it by a couple of minutes uh, which i guess is okay aditya absolutely bro absolutely so thank you so much rohan uh, those were some power packed insights uh, pretty short of time to discuss all of them uh but before we continue to the q&a session we appreciate all of you for taking out time today to attend the session and as a small token of appreciation we would like to give out a small information brochure for you to view later uh if you're not able to view the link it's uh, in case you missed it you can click on the chat box at the bottom of the screen uh we'll just give a minute and let the questions come in uh rohan so we have already started receiving a few questions if you like to answer them sure sure Sure. So the first question is, uh, what is the future of TVOD in the Indian market perspective? Sorry, I lost you there. Could you repeat the question? What is the future of TVOD in India market perspective? Yeah. Uh, it's early days uh, for TVOD in India. I think uh, a lot, a lot of platforms are trying that. Uh, it really uh, is, uh, as I said, you know, uh, people are trying different kinds of monetization options to see what really works. people are experimenting with uh, tv uh, tvod uh, there is there is a lot of numbers being thrown around in terms of you know this is the potential and this is what is possibly what people can do i think uh, it is has a great future because people are now all uh, buying large screen if you see the uh, data of tvs that are being bought people are moving to larger screens yeah. and uh, uh, and i guess uh, if you are buying content on tvod you would want to watch it in high resolution to kind of uh, enjoy that so yeah. uh, it's it's future is very bright but very early days absolutely right uh, the next question is uh, how do you manage a multi platform app development with faster time to market being the key strategy um so there are two ways to do it one is either you work with a platform like movie where we've got all these apps Uh, ready uh, on and published already on the platform um, uh, you just uh, you know talk to movie experts and we kind of uh, within weeks get your app on the t- on the tv that on the tv brand that of your choice either samsung or apple or roku or whichever you want it can be done within weeks um, what we've seen is you can also done it do it yourself in terms of getting those developed but it would take a significant more time significantly more time absolutely like like we all agree can agree uh, movie is the one stop shop for all ott uh, solutions right so moving on uh, uh hero with a great session do you foresee a convergence of metaverse and ott in the new uh, near future as one of the platforms oh uh, i don't know frankly and honestly <laughs> i don't know it's too far out i think with 5g uh we might see something uh moving towards it because for a metaverse to really happen the 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 speeds have to be faster the adoption has to be more more widespread than earlier adoption stage that is right now so the jury is still out absolutely and i think it's pretty early on right uh, until unless we see a lot of early adopters uh, taking on to the metaverse it's, it's very hard to predict what's going to happen yeah absolutely Uh, so the next question is how can ad tech partnerships uh, with ott increase revenue yeah that's a good question so as i said uh, there are various revenue models that all of us are looking at a lot of our customers are looking at various different ott models ad tech partnership is something which a uh, uh, lot of ott platforms are also trying to see if we can directly do that uh as of now i think uh, it's still uh it's still early days because uh still at everything depends on traffic right so yeah. it it's uh, it depends on how much traffic you have what is the uh potential of the ad tech platform that you're talking to what is the kind of expectations they have um i think netflix launching the award will set some 
benchmarks in terms of data in terms of uh, mm-hmm. also you sharing data with ad tech right so ad tech is also going to ask you for data how much consumption how much viewership etc etc i don't think a lot of ott platforms today are even sharing data to that level so it's it's a it's a uh, growing uh, field uh, yeah. i think in the next two or three months you will definitely have an answer on this uh, uh, once uh, the industry captains go this route and uh, the industry starts asking for data sure absolutely the next question is what are your thoughts on how a content owner should be monetizing their content uh, if they are to release on ott for the first time So these are first-time content owners. Yes. So that was my last insight that I was saying: marketing your content. So you know you you created that opportunity where your content is uh, kind of being there on the OTT platform, which has been released on the OTT platform. Yeah. How is the OTT platform uh, looking to market your content? How are you putting in uh, mm-hmm. your efforts to market that content? Right. So there are two pieces of that. now uh, on how the ott platform manages your or markets your content it's all about you uh, uh, reaching the right stakeholders marketing your content within that organization to ensure there is enough excitement so that you might get that extra bit of edge rather than yeah. you know just that that plain vanilla execution in terms of you know this is the process execution of step 1 step 2 step 3 and this is done how do you get yeah. that edge that's why you know those relationships and those marketing Uh, to the stakeholders within your partner is very very important right and and if, if i may add uh, another thing that also depends is also uh, the cycle the content delivery cycle like right? if if mm. it's the movie that is already seen its days in the theaters mm. it's probably not going to you know work well in the tv only mode but probably will work in seo only mode uh, yeah. similarly you know for content that uh, you know have no one has seen before it's 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 a brand new opening mm. a tv only model will definitely work for them right mm. So yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, it depends on absolutely the content on the how you present it, how you market it. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. So moving on, uh, this is more of a request uh, than a question since I have a lot of video apps on TV platforms like Roku, Apple, Android, and Amazon, mostly Avod, and some and have some troubles with attention because people come watch uh, watch what they like and come back only when a new episode is released. Can movie help? Yeah, you can talk to our experts. Uh, absolutely, we can definitely help you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the next question is: What are the different types of monetization uh, movie can provide for our platform once we sign up? Yes, so that's a good question. So uh, the uh, different kinds of monetization platforms which are available, all of them are with movie. Uh, so as I said, award as award, D award, etc. These are the low hanging fruits. Everybody has them. but we also have couponings we have discounts uh, we have donations uh, we have all these uh, all these different kinds of uh, uh, monetization options that you can possibly think of uh, because uh, we've been doing this for the last 8 years and hence uh, due to serving thousands of customers we have all productized all of that and all of that is present on the platform so you think of a monetization option and uh, yeah. we will have it The next question is: What makes uh, someone select your uh, lower or higher subscriptions? <laughs> okay, so essentially, what we always, uh, how our uh, philosophy is, we work with our customers. Yeah. So, depending upon how, at what stage you're starting a business, typically, if say you're starting from scratch, uh, we would recommend you to go with our lowest plan, right? And as you scale, we scale. Mm-hmm. So that's how we built our business over the years, and that's how we continue to want to build our business. We want to build a partnership with you, and uh, I guess uh, we both need to uh, scale and win the market together. Absolutely. Uh, the next question is: Is there a future with encryption technology under developing platform technology? Um, sorry, I'm not the right person to answer that question. <laughs> uh i think if you can take a note and maybe we can drop in an email uh we'll asking our tech team absolutely we'll do we'll do uh the next uh, question is do you see ott leveraging user generated content as an offering something that is parallel to tiktok or reels oh absolutely i think that is one uh, conversation that keeps cropping in a lot of conversations nowadays where uh, so essentially um, how it's it's moving it's moving from a creation economy 
to a distraction economy so people are moving from facebook to tiktok right tiktok is more of distraction rather than creation so uh, uh, so that's how the industry is looking at it uh, we have actually launched a product called movie minis uh, yeah. to specifically look at this kind of uh, content which is user generated which is something that you know uh, is part of the module that movie provides uh, out of the box uh, we've uh, we have seen a lot of conversations around it uh, but uh, we are yet to see one major implementation executing right now so it will happen in the next few months for sure but yes this is a very exciting space where uh, ott platforms are looking at uh, leveraging that kind of short videos and uh, the the the, uh, the the tiktok kind of an approach but yeah right yeah cool so uh, yeah well that's it uh, that uh, brings us to the end of our session uh, the movie keeps on conducting such webinars each month uh, and some for interesting industry topics and showcases best of uh, the movie offerings I would personally request all of you to uh, you know keep a look out on our social media handles and the website for registration of our future uh, upcoming webinars. Uh, Rohan, if you can go to the next slide, uh, yeah. I would like to also speak about uh, our uh, new, sorry, uh, in our continuous effort for enriching the journey of our movie content partner portal. We have joined hands with DataServe, one of the leading system integrators in India, to deliver efficient services with tailor-made solutions. Uh, movie and data server are coming together to showcase a broad range of products and services at stall A14 uh, of the broadcast uh, broadcast India Trade Show 2022, which is happening between October 13th to 15th at the Geo Convention Center in Mumbai, India. So you can come along and uh, you know visit us at our store and do store speak to our experts. Uh, moving on. So post the showcase of the broadcast India show, movie, the movie train is all set to uh, keep foot in New York to participate at the NAP show 2022. Yeah. Movie will be showcasing some of its recent product offerings and features. Uh, we'll be exhibiting at the level 3, booth 1340 at Javits Center, New York. If you're in New York between the 19th and 20th of October, please pay us a visit and talk to our experts and indulge us with your business plans. Uh, well, this brings us to the end of today's session uh, once again thank you for tuning in and uh, allowing us to present you with more informative and advanced adding webinars to learn more about movie and how we can help you uh, at your ott uh, streaming business please reach out to us through any of our social media handles and we we'll schedule a personalized demo with one of our streaming experts uh, so that's it this is your host aditya and i would like to thank rohan for taking out time thank you thank you thank, thank you guys. so much thank everyone so much. for joining us Bye-bye. Bye. Until next time, guys. Thanks so much.